Good day everyone, this is Crypto Portfolio and my name is Dan. A lot of cryptocurrency enthusiasts like to compare the dot-com bubble with the current cryptocurrency's market capitalization. But some do it in a negative context, people like me. Some do it in a positive context. By showing that current crypto market capitalization is so small in comparison to the dot-com peak in 2000. Today I would like to show you why it is naive, overly simplistic and preposterous to compare capitalizations of dot-com companies with cryptocurrencies. Thanks to Kojin Sama for raising the question. I called this slide willfully blind because I think that a lot of crypto experts actually see the flaw in their comparison but still do it for the sake of attracting more investments into cryptocurrencies. Well, I value truth more, so I will show you why comparing capitalizations of markets mentioned above is wrong. First of all, let's see what image has become very widespread lately. Here is the capitalization of all Nasdaq companies during the dot-com bubble peak in 2000. It is $6.7 trillion. Here's the capitalization of all cryptocurrencies as of 7th of September 2017. It is $162 billion. Attractive image, isn't it? The main reason I was triggered while seeing this image is that you cannot compare such things. Nasdaq listed companies and cryptocurrencies are uncomparable. How? Listed companies? have cash flows, profits, costs, margins, balance sheets, net income statements, audits, and so on. Cryptocurrencies do not possess those features. Also, listed companies pay out dividends, while cryptocurrencies are unable to do this legally. At least now. The crypto projects, which are centered around paying out dividends, are illegal. You need to register your tokens as securities if you want to sell those tokens to other people. For example, a lot of casinos, which collect money on ACOs and pay out dividends, are illegal. Even buying tokens can be dangerous for investors, especially if you are a citizen of US of A. In reality, this $6.7 trillion dot-com bubble is not accounted for inflation. More than 17 years have passed. Now it is $9.65 trillion in, term, in 2017 terms. <coughs> Cryptocurrencies should be compared to other financial instruments. For example, gold, currencies and securities without dividends. We already understood that comparing capitalizations of real-world companies and cryptocurrencies is wrong. Now what? Let's find out what aspects of dot-com bubble are actually comparable. Overwhelming demand is what describes dot-com bubble and current ICO bubble. Nobody can challenge that point. Many crypto experts agree that current ICO situation is toxic for cryptocurrency community. Even the shittiest of securities get funding from the investors. Yep, the same here in the crypto world. Did you know that during dot-com bubble a lot of companies' shares doubled in price on the first trading day. Sounds familiar, right? <laughs> uh, such price increase is fueled by investor greed. Greed is another aspect of both bubbles. What other aspects of dot-com bubble can be compared? Average first day returns is another aspect which describes dot-com bubble and current ICO bubble. From the graph you can see that during 1999 to 2000 the average first day returns were abnormal. During dot-com bubble from 4 to 6 trillion dollars of shareholders value evaporated. This is just an interesting fact which is also applicable to crypto. Cryptocurrency market is also affected by the same economic forces which brought down dot-com. Only the best cryptocurrencies will with the most active communities will survive after the bubble burst. Don't forget to subscribe and see you next time. Um, and remember that real capitalization of cryptocurrency is not 
circulating supply multiplied by price, but total supply multiplied by price. Don't let coin market cap fool you.